time we are a channel of peace, any time Christian people is a channel of love, channel of unity. Why? Because now we belong to Jesus. I want you to hear this wonderful song. This song says, Now I belong to Jesus. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'll trade you out later. Awesome. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to all of our friends, our members, our online worshipers. We're so glad that you're here. And I wonder um, if anyone is here for the very first time. Is there anyone for whom this is your first time gathering for worship in the meeting house of First Congregational Church? Awesome. If you would, keep, keep a hand up for just a minute. Everybody who, raise your hand again if you're a first-time visitor. All right, fantastic, fa fantastic, good to see you. Uh, one of our deacons is going to be bringing around a, just a little uh, welcome bag. And uh, keep your hand up, just long enough for Maisie to find you. Um, all right, well, God bless you. I tell you what, let's uh, get moving in the direction of worship. Let's get some announcements out of the way. Wednesday, uh, Bible study, March 20th, that's this coming Wednesday at, um, when do I do that thing? 11 o'clock. And uh, so if you, uh, it's okay. So um, uh, if you're available, if you'd like to, you can also go to the website. You, there's a Zoom link. If you're available, you'd like to do that uh, any or all the time. And uh, let's see, March 20th. So that's also 
uh, this coming Wednesday, after the Bible study, we're going to be making Easter treat bags, so around noon. So whether, so whether you can make it to the Bible study or not, if you want to come help do that, some of the folks who do come, uh, and anybody else who would like to trickle in at about noon, we'll be putting together uh, the treat, Easter treat bags because, next slide, well, okay, never mind, hold on, trustee meeting, because, trustee meeting this Wednesday, this Thursday at 5 o'clock, okay, and go back, okay. We're going to be ba- filling bags because we have Easter egg hunt coming Saturday. So much fun. Uh, super awesome. Uh, th- this event keeps growing every year. Lots of kids coming, lots of families. A great opportunity uh, for us to continue connecting with the community. Now, anyone here who is, I'm looking at you. If I'm making eye contact with you, I'm expecting you to be there to volunteer. Okay? Go ahead. Yeah, about 8 a.m. for the volunteers, and uh, we got a bunch of, of teenage kids that come help, and uh, anybody else who'd like to come help, and uh, it's a good time, and uh, you'll only need to be here, you'll end up here for just no more than a few hours, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun. The way we do it uh, has been popular, and uh, people keep coming back, and every now and then, people come and tell me, I'm going to come visit your church on Sunday, and uh, sometimes they do, uh, and uh, so that's awesome. Let's see, what, what else, are there any more announcements? What do we got? Hey, can you un- unplug that US that receiver again and pop it back in? Whoever's hearing aid interferes with that, you must just turned it up. I don't know what's going on with that thing. And uh, so uh, at any rate, yeah, come on out if you're available. And uh, also, uh, thank you, some, some folks have brought in some candy. If you'd like to bring in candy, you can do so tomorrow and uh, Tuesday. Uh, or, uh, there you go, excellent. Now it seems to be working, or did Jim just advance it? Can you try it? Oh, my goodness. Okay. No, Jim did. Can you go to the next slide, Jim? Thank you. And, uh, you know, Ephraim, why don't you just go up there and man the the thing for me? Try it again in another USB port, okay? And uh, so also, if anybody would like to, these are some of the items you're welcome to bring in uh, to just make additional resources for our monthly food distribution that happens on the last Tuesday of every month at um, beginning at 4.30. Volunteers are welcome to come 3.30, 4 o'clock. And uh, even a little earlier than that, if you'd like to. We have a committee that is made up of the folks who've been coming from the start and have kind of helped organize and shape it. And uh, that really is, is a big blessing uh, for us. Is it working yet? Okay, go to the next slide. Let's see what we got. If you could walk just slightly faster from the people who are waiting. Thank you very much. Okay, so also, very important, pay attention for this. There's going to be a... Dance Summer Intensive, if you don't know what that means, ask Christina, I'd have, I'm still sorting it out, uh, a Dance Summer Intensive fundraiser. We got a lot of dancers in this church, which is super awesome. I, do, I, I cut a little rug too, if you, no, I'm just kidding. And uh, I, I have been in the Nutcracker performance for three years in a row. And, uh, uh, but anyway, Felicity and Charlotte will be selling these tickets for their fundraiser, the two of them are going to be going for these uh, three-week-long intensives this summer. Uh, both of them are pursuing uh, like a career in dance. And, uh, you know, frankly, these things are just off the rails expensive. And uh, so any, anybody would like to come, have a, enjoy that. They're going to be going around selling them personally after church today, whether they're shy about it or not. They're going to be doing it. Walking around, talking to people, looking at my eyeball to eyeball, not through a phone. Listen, if you would like to come to their dinner, you're welcome to do it. And uh, remember what I said a couple weeks ago, I do not want anything ever in this church to be cost prohibitive as much as is possible. So if that $25 is a struggle for you, that doesn't count you out. Come let me know. We'll give you a ticket. And uh, so anyway, if you would like to support that in any way, by way or, and I know for some of you, $25, you're like, hey, I'd like to give a lot more. Well, we're going to let you, okay? And uh, so, uh, so, so at any rate, that's, uh, let's see, any other announcements? I think that's it. Okay, excellent. And uh, I'll tell you what, you know, some of you may have noticed these little doodad, doohickey, I don't know what to call them, receivers, whatever, okay? And you may have noticed, if you're very astute, that the finish is gone on these steps because... Uh, a man, a local con- carpenter, uh, is installing two handrails 
right here, okay? And he's right in the middle of the job. He's almost done. He's coming back, I think, tomorrow to finish up the job. So that on Good Friday and other times like that, we have handrails to come up and nail your, your uh, nail to the cross, to put flowers to make it a living cross on Resurrection Sunday. And, uh, you know, um, he's going to give us a little bit of support so that we can come up and down these steps a little easier. This morning we've gathered to lean on the Lord for the support that only he can provide. And you know, just like these exist in the mind of my imagination now, and they will exist soon in reality, so too sometimes we have to engage our imagination by way of our spirit and the inclination of our heart to remember that while we cannot always see, when we lean into the arms of the support of God, it is always present. This morning, I want to invite you by way of worshiping in song, fellowshipping with one another, opening up the scripture to do one simple thing today. Just lean into the arms of Jesus. If you are able, won't you please rise this morning as we sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 170, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. We're going to be singing verses 1 and 2. Is that working? Okay. Amen. While you're still standing, why don't you take a moment to greet your neighbor with the sign of peace and the blessing of the Lord. Take a moment to greet one another. Yeah, good. I don't know what on earth happened. God bless you. My teeth, I need it. Give me your hand if you want to be. It's a joke. It's a joke. Digo, le voy a María, dame la mano solo que tú no te vas a poner. El novio está grande. Dice María, ¿qué problema te ha gustado? Gloria a Dios.
as we come to the time of prayer, a couple of things. Uh, first, I don't know if you're aware of this, but I think we have, as a member of this church, an original member of this church, probably the most Irish woman in America. <laughs> I don't know if you're all aware of this, but in a little while, Pastor Cruz, don't let me forget, we're going to sing happy birthday to her, because you're singing happy birthday to somebody born on St. Patrick's Day. So Pat happens to have been born on St. Patrick's Day. She's from Ireland. And every now and then, when we're singing and I hear her accent, I'm like, oh gosh, I should record that as my phone ringtone every now and then. It's so incredible. So Pat has something uh, you're going to come up and share, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh, hold on. We'll sing the happy birthday later. Let's save it for the end. But Pat has uh, something to share with us uh, for St. Patrick's Day. And remember, St. Patrick's Day, I don't have time today to go at length, but St. Patrick, one of these, some one day I should, uh, was a really interesting man who really brought Christianity to then the outer stretches of the Roman Empire, and I think about the year 432, uh, to the British Isles. He's most famous for his work in Ireland, uh, but quite an incredible evangelist. Uh, who was a slave and then became a, an incredible evangelist uh, leading people to Jesus. Go ahead. Just talk right into that microphone. Good morning, everyone. Get closer. Get right into it. <laughs> um, as many of you know, I write poetry from time to time, and I wrote this some time ago. <clears throat> it's called Childhood Home. I've cruised the fjords of Norway and traveled on the Rhine. Heidelberg was awesome and Vienna just divine. Scotland was historic, London so sublime, but the pearl of all my travels is my Emerald Isle so fine. Though I may travel near and far, my heart will always be on that Isle of 40 shades of green far across the sea. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Amen. Can I, can I keep that? And I'll email it out so everybody can read it, too. So I'm going to hang on to this, and I will retype that or scan it in. I'll email it out to the church mailing list, too, so you can, so you can see it. And uh, a couple of things to be in prayer about. First, uh, just this morning, at least six or seven people asked me about the current climate and conditions in Haiti. And this week, this past week, uh, while on a, a kind of mission, a kind of uh, vacation that turned into a little bit of a missional uh, experience, um, I must have had, I don't know, several people Facebook messaging me. The sad reality is, and I will only give you the briefest snapshot, you can ask me more later or Christina. Uh, Christina is, is, is uh, at least as knowledgeable, more so as to the ongoing. If you want to know about Haiti's history, ask me. If you want to know what's going on, you should ask her. Uh, she stays up and is connected to people who pay close attention to the security. In fact, I, I can't even say very much about that uh, for the sake of security. And um, when the news cares to mention Haiti, they do it when they can put video footage of something on fire. So what happens is every now and then, the world becomes aware of the struggle and suffering of the Haitian people that has been in existence far longer than the big earthquake. If I had a dime for every time someone asked me, well, Haiti's really a mess since the earthquake, right? Yeah. She's been the poorest part of this planet in the Western Hemisphere for a century and goes through periods of dramatic upheaval as we see now. Haiti is, I think it's fair to say, in the worst social and political condition that it has been in for a century, literally, because it was similar factors that led to the Marine Corps occupation of Haiti all through the 1920s. In fact, it was in those campaigns that many of the most famous Marines were given medals of honor for routing out violent gangs in the mountains, the descendants of those gang spirits are alive and well today. So in the last few years, Haiti has gone from normal, corrupt government to no functioning government. 
And the long and short of it is, somebody asked me about, uh, I always forget his last name, Jimmy Barbecue, the head gang member who organized a bunch of the gangs together and sees himself as something of a revolutionary. A few people ask me today and people ask me often, why do they call him Barbecue? Two versions of the story. His mother sold barbecue by the side of the road, I believe in Port-au-Prince when he was little. He was always there, they called him Barbecue. I think that's probably true. There are others, you could be more imaginative, who say perhaps, and this occurs, when Haiti is at her worst, that maybe, maybe there's death by way of burning, which does happen. Every single day I wake up with a completely broken heart for Haiti and try to live out the rest of the day as functionally as I can. And my pain and my family's heartache pales in comparison to the daily suffering of Haitian people. That's the truth. And the truth is that the news media will show it to you only when they can sensationalize it, at least allow me to tell you how I really feel. And the rest of the time, we forget that there are children who don't eat every day, some of whom who don't eat every week, many of whom live in radical fear every day. Your worst fears about what a country can become that's Haiti right now. So, I try not to talk about it because it is too painful. To answer the immediate questions, our ministry in Haiti continues. God only knows how. Our in-country director still takes care of an elderly care home. Those people still eat. They are safe relatively speaking. Anytime people in Haiti right now try to live a normal life, they go back and hide in their homes when the gunfire starts. There is no functional government in Haiti. There kind of never was. Now, the gangs are in control of most of the country, and Barbecue sees himself as some kind of strange revolutionary. Pray for Haiti. Our ministries continue. We know people personally who have suffered horrible deaths. I try not to talk about it. But that's the answer. It's post-apocalyptic conditions. Watch a television series like The Walking Dead. That'll clue you in a little bit. And yet the church is strong. The people are full of prayer. And they continue. They say in Haiti, Kai kule ka twampe sole, men li pa ka twampe la pli. A leaky roof can fool the sun, but it can't fool the rain. And I know many believers in Haiti who have enviable faith in this moment. And I am frankly baffled when they look me in the eye, some of the families I know here, and say, let's just keep praying. I say, man, your faith is so much stronger than mine. Let's keep praying. I hope that answers the question. I cannot go into a lot of detail. But our ministry survives. Many of the people we know and love survive. And the world's a messy place. I'm going to offer a prayer in a moment, the briefest of pastoral prayers, after which time I'll invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer together with me. I would invite you, in addition to all of those prayer needs listed on the back of your bulletin, to be in prayer for Marsha Weiss, who almost certainly is watching online right now. God bless you, Marsha. And uh, they were supposed to go on a cruise, and she's not doing well. And uh, so they're at home. And I'm going to follow up and get more details and uh, see if I can't go over and pray with them this week. The Bible says when you don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit will give you utterances. I don't like to talk about Haiti all that much. And I don't know how to pray. Other than to say this, whether you are in a desperate situation in Croix de Bouquet, Haiti, or whether you are 
watching online at home because of a sickness. Whether you don't know where your next meal is coming from, or you're fighting a losing battle with eating too much, all of us have the same core need, and that is the love of God as found in Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, we all just live in varying degrees of post-apocalyptic realities. We all suffer the same pains of loss, and we all need Christ. Won't you turn your heart to the Lord with me, and let us pray. Mighty and everlasting, eternal God, flinging the stars and the galaxies and the planets and all that is into motion and into being was not enough for you. Somehow in your might, wisdom, eternal knowledge, great favor and grace, you also decided to make man in your own image. And inasmuch as we mar it on ourselves and scar it on others, yet your sovereign, redeeming grace and providential plan for the unfolding of history to ultimately culminate with the return of the master of mercy as the king of kings to crush injustice, to wipe away every tear, to right every wrong, to restore all that the locusts have eaten. Gracious and everlasting and good God of power and justice and might, won't you make just one person of power who has made a promise to help Haiti fulfill that commitment? And won't you be with those who suffer throughout the Caribbean and Latin America and won't you give us great guidance and wisdom and security in the storm to anchor our faith and our hope, not in the powers of this world, but in Christ alone. Mighty, everlasting, eternal God, won't you bless my dear sister Marcia and all of those who suffer. Let our praises today be the praises of those who have experienced your grace and mercy and chosen to fall into the everlasting arms. Wondrous and everlasting God, today we pray humbly, simply, directly, earnestly, and honestly, simply, boldly, because of the favor you have given us in Jesus Christ. And so it is praying after the manner in which he taught the disciples to pray, the manner in which the church has kept and preserved for two millennia, the manner in which so many lives have been changed by praying the simple prayer of letting go and trusting your eternal sovereign favor, love, and presence. God, today we pray in one accord, even as the disciples were found by the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2 in the upper room, and we pray in one accord, in one voice, after the manner in which Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Will the deacons please come forward as we receive the tithe and the offering this morning.
let's sing one a cappella. Listen, you sound beautiful, and the wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing through this place and through this generation in times of greatest turmoil, tribulation, trouble, and trial. In those times, God pours out His Holy Spirit among those who are not expecting it. Let's sing this together, a cappella. We're about to lose some of you back up north soon. I know who you are. And while you're still here, let's sing like one big choir, one verse of the refrain, I surrender all. There you go. Let's do it. All to Jesus I surrender. May God, you who possess all things, we thank you for giving us the blessed privilege of being used like instruments in your hands of generosity, of blessing, of power. Mighty and everlasting God, won't you bless this offering, multiply it, give us wisdom in its implementation. In Jesus' name, amen. Anyone who would like for their children to go to Children's Church, or if you're a child and you'd like to go there, you are welcome to do so. Christina will be taking those kids. <laughs> A reading from the book of Romans, a familiar passage to many. This happens to be the first passage of Scripture on my spiritual journey I ever read with any seriousness. I'm reading from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I'll be reading from the New International Version, 1984 edition. Follow along in whatever you have or listen to the word of the Lord. Remembering that the most blessed translation of the Bible is what? The one you read. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Or in the King James and in many other translations, which is your reasonable service. I'll tell you why it says that in many translations in a little bit. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve, demonstrate what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. First of all, thank you 
to the guest speaker that we had last week, Sal Bazaz, who has the best last name ever. I don't know. I thought his sermon was, was good, and uh, I heard nothing but positive things. I wish I had a cool last name like Bazaz. I would use it. I'd be like, you'd think it was Pizzazz. I'd be like, Pizzazz. I would use it for everything. I should change my name. This message, I've decided to gear it around a little bit and experience from our vacation. Because in it, God reminded me of some powerful truths that are so easy to let slip into the background for me and you and everybody else. So what happened while we were on vacation? Here's some pictures of it. We were up in the Great Smoky Mountains uh, with the Loeffler family. You spend a week with somebody, you know. They find some things out about them. <laughs> All good things. And so we're up on vacation in Gatlinburg. Beautiful. Pigeon Forge. Beautiful. It's great Smoky Mountains. Wonderful. And we're having a good time. And I happened to notice in a group that a bunch of us who train jiu-jitsu with Professor Paulo and his wife, Professor Natalie, I happened to notice we were all sort of sharing, uh, several of us were sharing pictures of where we were for spring break. And I noticed that Chris Sugg and his family were in the same place, or going to be in the same place. And so the last day of our vacation, before we drove back, I just wanted to do a cold plunge in a river that we had seen that river. And you know, they say it's good for you. I like to get in cold water in as much as my swimming pool in Naples, Florida is capable of becoming cold. I thought in the 60s was cold. I'm going to let you in on this little secret. That's way colder. And uh, so I said, hey, let's do, we're going to do a cold plunge after we're done with the day's activities, you know, spending money and, and, and eating fudge and ice cream in Gatlinburg. If you've never been there, you should totally go. Just be careful, it's one big tourist trap, and then there's the Great Smoky Mountains, beautiful. So I, I, Chris had messaged me, I think it's how it started, and I said, you know, I messaged him, where are you guys at? He messaged me back, what are you guys up to? And uh, this was on Wednesday, right? Wednesday, yeah. And uh, I said, well, we're doing some stuff. Later on today, we're gonna go down to this river that we hiked by and do a cold plunge. Me and the boys, I'm trying to get everybody to do it, at least me and the kids. And uh, some of the adults are scared, wouldn't want to do it, you know. But that's a different story, my wife. And uh, so, uh, so at, any rate, at any rate, I said, yeah, we're going to go and do the cold plunge. Well, Chris texts me back to every pastor's favorite words to hear. Well, what if I meet you there and you baptize me? I said, yes. I'm the only pastor who goes on vacation and it turns into mission trips. Probably not the only one. And, uh, but I, I live this strange life. And uh, so, so I said, yeah, let's do it. Now, here's what happened, okay? And we've spoken, Chris knows I'm, I, look, you can't be a member of my church and not like, you, got, you know you might get brought in on something on a sermon. This is beautiful, and I have to share this with you. He got up that morning with a strong sense that he should just bring an extra set of clothes, not really knowing why. Between the morning, our conversation, the Lord impresses upon him to be baptized. So I said, of course, let's do it. So he met us there, and this is what happened. We, we, uh, we baptized a member of, uh, about to be a member of this church uh, in the mountains, in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, in the Smoky Mountains, in the cold, easily the coldest water I have ever gotten into. And, uh, oh man, I was way, had to be in, just above freezing. And, uh, and, and uh, then afterwards, after we did the baptism, then all the kids went, ran and jumped in the water and did a little cold plunge. I have a, if you go to my Facebook page, that's all of us, everybody, ex ex everybody except Christina and Erica. <laughs> And uh, I even have, I, I'll, I'll, I'll share it some other time when it fits the, I have a picture of her taking a picture, making Brian go back in a second time because she didn't get the picture the first time. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm going to share, I'm waiting. That'll pop back up for a sermon illustration someday because that's the best. But I had to break them in slow. I've only been members a little while. They're still trying to deal with the recoil of having Pastor Chris in your life. Now listen, 
So that's all of us. So this is what happened. We're on, we're on vacation, okay? We're on vacation. Let me get back to the beginning slide so it's not a distraction. Uh, we're on vacation, and the Lord presents an opportunity for a baptism. And listen, uh, it doesn't matter if you're on vacation, if you're at work, where you're at, the wind of the Holy Spirit is at all times, in all places, blowing through the lives of people, pulling and drawing men and women and children everywhere unto himself. Chris said something to me like, is, it, is this, are you okay? We're going to do this? I'm like, man, I live for this. Are you kidding me? What's that got to do with Romans chapter 12? Well, Here's a few thoughts of what it has to do with Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. In the waters of baptism, we identify with Christ in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection. We also are affirming that we will become followers of the way of Jesus. So the Christian life, as represented in baptism represents a, let's call it, an affirmation with objective truth. Jesus lived, he was the Son of God, he is the reigning King of kings, he died to pay the penalty for sin because God is a just God, and he would not forgive sin without making an appropriate satisfaction of the law that he had written. Because God is perfect and holy and just. To forgive us without the cross, without the blood of Jesus would be unjust, would be unfair. So God, in his great wisdom and mercy and love, created a universe within which you and I have a little phrase that I dislike called free will. A better phrase, we are independent moral agents. We have moral agency. God gave to you and he gave to me choices to make so that the love relationship that he desires with his creation could rest on a foundation of grace and mercy and, and, and love and real interaction, deep, authentic relationship. No one can gain a wife who will love her by saying, guess what? I'm reminded of Biff Tannen's character in the Back to the Future movies, if you're familiar. No one can go to a woman and say, guess what, you're my girl. This ain't no caveman stuff, dragging her off by the hair. No, you're not going to develop an authentic love relationship that way. And God, who desires relationship with us, offers similarly the gift of salvation by faith in Jesus Christ, which is nothing more than affirming what God has done for us in Jesus. Faith is trust. That's it. It's trust. It's saying, it's not saying, I know that I know that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that all of this is real and true. No, it is saying, you know what, Jesus, I have seen your miracles, I have witnessed the power of your resurrection, and I choose to be your disciple on an ever-constant, growing lifestyle of renovation of the mind. So it is affirmation, the Christian life, as represented in baptism especially, which points to these truths, it is affirmation of the objective truth value that Jesus is the Savior of the world. That's what the book of Romans, that's what Paul is saying when he says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord, is Lord, and that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's why elsewhere the apostle Paul says if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, we are to be pitied, we're fools, wasting our lives. But the greatest, the, the, the piece of historic fact that is attested to most greatly throughout all of human history, recognized by secularists and religionists alike, is that Jesus lived, that Jesus died, and that every one of his disciples believed him to be risen from the dead, that he appeared to at least 500 witnesses. We recognize the objective truth of the historic Jesus and we choose to walk the well-worn paths of his disciples throughout the ages. But this is not a mental game. This life of following after Jesus, it's not a philosophical acceptance of something like Jesus is Lord, no. It is the applied truth that my Jesus who ambushed me 
in the early 1990s in Modesto, California, that that Jesus who was hiding in the bushes to capture me as I walked by on my own path, that my Jesus whose Holy Spirit fills my heart and guides me in ways consistent with his word. That he leads us. This passage of scripture tells us to forsake the way of thinking of the world and embrace the thoughts of God as made manifest and as witnessed both in scripture and in the leading of the Holy Spirit. Baptism is a picture of identification with Christ and of the leading of the Holy Spirit. It is this life in the Holy Spirit that brought this baptism about. God strangely stirring our hearts to go train jujitsu like some kind of maniac people. What man my age chooses to let that man with 30 years of jujitsu experience choke me out at will? I'll tell you who. A man who strangely was led by the Holy Spirit to go learn an art from a fellow follower of Jesus. And then just through open relationship, just authentic relationship, just being friends with people, the Lord grabbed Chris at a time in his life and said, hey, Chris, Paulo, you get to be a couple of the points of contact with the love of Jesus that will lead to this man's baptism, his family's life in Christ. Jesus said, the wind blows and you can't see it, but you see a tree waving in the wind. The Apostle Paul is telling us in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, to learn to see the evidence of the wind, to take a different perspective, to learn to cultivate a relationship with God that has an indwelling power that can lead us day by day that can lead us through trial and hardship. How is it that the most worshipful woman I have ever met in my entire life, who was dripping with the love of God, was a very old woman raising my daughter Carmelie on a dirt floor with a shack that couldn't fool the sun or the rain? I brought that woman a spatula one day, a spatula from the Dollar Tree. And she erupted into a worship service for 30 minutes. And I said, where am I at? What is with this? You know, in the trial and tragedy of places like Cuba, and it's, Pastor Cruz is praying for us, life in the spirit. Listen, in, in a place like Cuba, where, 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 where real communism, which isn't such a hot thing, uh, okay, uh, is, is causing terrible oppression of people. In places like Honduras, where we just were, where people are, are just, so many people are just trying to get by. In places like Haiti, where people are suffering the, uh, the worst kind of social conditions imaginable to most of us, in these places, they will break you or they will make you. And when they make you, they make you dependent upon God because you have the great privilege of having had the veneer plastic that is our false perception that we control our life. You have had it ripped away and been given the greatest gift ever because when you have no bank account to turn to, when you cannot get a loan because there is no such thing, when the government is actually out to get you, when you find yourself in that situation, situation and you have two choices. Will I succumb to the temptation of despair that the world seems to want to pigeonhole me into or will I lean on the everlasting arms of God? It doesn't matter what our goals are, what we think our life is about. If we are called to life in Jesus Christ, it is the leading of the Holy Spirit that will guide us into the paths and the places, the well-worn paths of faith that the faithful for generations have walked. It will guide us into that place and then what it looks like will be different for everybody and it will be different than anybody ever thought of for themselves. Think differently. Renew your mind. 
Dare I say for the 10,000th time, don't let the news media shape your thoughts about the world. This is the only newspaper I read daily. Be open to a new way of thinking. And the Lord will guide you and lead you and guide us and lead us. I can't believe it's 1050 and that isn't even through the introduction. Okay, it's all right. Well, whatever. Okay, whatever. Listen, I want to just share with you one last thought and then I'm going to have the Sugg family come up here and we're going to welcome them into church membership. We're going to celebrate with the goodness of God of what it means to live life in community of the faithful and sometimes the faithless. You know, this is the place to come and be equipped, not to come and demonstrate all of our great spiritual pomp and circumstance. This is the place to come to be poured into, to open the Word of God, to look for the leading of the Holy Spirit. This is the place where where God gathers us to be equipped for the trials and temptations that happen outside of those doors, to share the love of God with others, to find ourselves healing more whole and more equipped because of the presence of God in our lives. And you say, Pastor Chris, you're a crazy person. 100%. 100%. Because if I would be a fool, I would be a fool for Christ. Because in this world, you're going to be somebody's fool. Why not make it the lover of your soul? In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, the same underlying Greek word is used, as is used here, Speaking of our reasonable act of service. Speaking of why it would be that we would change our thinking to be in line with God's. That underlying Greek word is logikon, from which the word logos comes, as in John 1, 1 and 1, 14. Jesus is the logos, that is the logic of the universe embodied in flesh. That is the voice of God, which speaks life into order and into existence, from which we get the word logic. This, this word literally refers to us becoming reasonable, becoming logical by aligning our lives with the one who gives logos. What does that mean? Let the world say it's crazy to follow Jesus all day long. And I, and I trust that you, will look on with eyes of faith for the future, recognizing that the insanity of the world is no place to find sure footing in this world. There is a kind of stability that comes, a kind of strength that comes, a kind of, a kind of, a kind of willingness to weather the storms of life that comes when you know and your heart knows and your mind knows and your soul knows and it goes into every piece of your central nervous system until your body even starts to know it, that if you are anchored in Christ, there is nothing this world can throw at you which can knock you down. And if you happen to fall down, there is a hand waiting to pull you up. You know, after I lowered Chris into the water and he was baptized, I said, he knew I wanted to do the cold plunge. I said, now you baptize me. And I held his hand and I was kind of hoping he'd just pull me out of the water instead of actually dropping me down in the water. And so I fell back in and then he pulled me back up. Follower of Jesus, that's what we're doing here, right? These sermons, these messages, our life together, a Bible study, a, a worship service, it's as the great theologian and preacher Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the great saint Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the great martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, Christ is present when Christians gather to do life together. And that's what we're doing. That's what's happening here. I want to ask...
Chris Sugg and his family, would you, all who are here, would you come up? Because And uh, Maisie, are you going to come up? Maisie is the current chairman of our Board of Deacons. And I want to invite you, uh, you know, if you hang out with me, I won't always make the whole, like, service about you. <laughs> but once in a while, I might. Listen, uh, man, I can't, I'm telling you something. If you don't think the wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing through this place, you need to open your spiritual eyes. I love it when people tell me, Buck says it to me, people tell me, you know, I don't really feel like you're my pastor, I feel like you're my friend. Jesus was a friend to sinners too, Buck. <laughs> right? Listen, we have gathered together on life's journey to encourage and challenge and equip fellow sinners to seek the highest, come on down, Maisie, to seek the highest aspirations of the human heart. She's Maisie, too shy, come on down. Uh, to seek the highest aspirations of the human heart. And I'm going to tell you something. I just love it. Training jujitsu, starting the, adding that to our martial art practice a few years ago, has been such a beautiful addition to our life. And it's not just because of the art. In fact, it's not mostly because of the art. It's because of some of the people that God has brought through our lives. You know, and we see it happening. This, this church, the biggest problem we're going to have in 10 years is where to put all the people because God's doing something. God's doing something here. Sometimes people come in and say, hey, when that congregational churches, when did they start hiring assemblies of God preachers? I say, I don't know. With me, I suppose. Because the Holy Spirit is blowing and we do well to pay attention. Because it isn't about anything else. It isn't about the name of the church that's on the sign. It isn't about none of that stuff. What we have done is say, let's gather together. Let's open up God's word and see what he has for us. And that is the most dangerous thing that you can do. And it's the most beautiful thing that you can do. You end up with good men in your life and wonderful families with cute little sleeping babies. Man, you'll never know how agitated I get when I hear pastors whining about how hard their life is. It's not all easy, but it's all good. Listen, uh, this morning we're welcoming the Sug family. This is Chris and Ryan. Oh, I kept messing up your name with your kids for some reason. I don't know why, I thought you're, I don't know. And uh, not so good with names. You have to forgive me on that. I forget them all the time. This is Chris and Ryan. Although, I'm going to be honest, it's easier to remember Chris because I've had to stop him from choking me many, many times. <laughs> not so, it's not so hard to forget him. And, uh, and by the way, I didn't always successfully stop him. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you got to join a church where you're like, I choked that guy out one time. If he goes too long, I'll make, okay, anyway, let's move on. And uh, so we're going to welcome this family into church membership. And, and I would remind you, if joining the church is something you're interested in, all you have to do is let us know. Let me know, let a deacon know. And uh, what does it mean? Does it mean we're going to take your blood sample and we're going to send you a... No, it doesn't mean any of that. All we're really saying is, hey, God's moving in my life, in this season of my life, in this place, among these people, so I want to affirm that I'm a part of that place. And uh, so here is a membership certificate in perhaps the world's worst handwriting, mine, and uh, I give one of these to everybody that I baptize. It's a little cross made of olive wood from Jerusalem. When you're in America, this sounds super exotic. When you're in Jerusalem, these things are everywhere. And uh, so here it is. And uh, it, my privilege to baptize you, and, and so beautiful the way God did it. God is so amazing. Tell me again. The life in the spirit's boring. Ha. I, yeah, if it's boring, you ain't doing it right, bro. That's that, sister. All right, listen, I want to invite you. Would you please rise before I keep you here for an hour more? Would you please rise? And uh, here's what we're going to do. This is our church covenant, okay? This is simply restated from our constitution, and this holds the central let's say, the central covenant, the central ideas of who we are striving to be as a people, uh, consistent with the founding members of this church, how they saw the Holy Spirit moving in this church. I'll ask you to say this with me together as one body. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior. We covenant together to receive the sacraments by coming to the Lord's table to nurture and support this family of faith 
through prayer, study, and a record of financial giving and willing service. We renounce the powers of evil and affirm the benevolent will and purposes of God. We choose to walk by faith and live by grace a disciplined life following the example of the Christ, the Redeemer. We endeavor to show love and justice to all people. We aim to grow in the Christian life as a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating His presence and furthering His mission in the world. Welcome. So glad you guys are here. Okay, listen, um, let's stay standing and sing this closing song. God bless you. Make sure you say hi to Chris and Ryan and the baby. just remembered what word it is that Pat sings that I think is so beautiful. What do you call the thing with a stem and petals and little leaves? Shamrock? No, a flower. Oh, the flower. Yeah, but you don't always sing it that way. You say more like flower. Flower? Anyway, I hear her Irish accent coming out. Listen, today is Pat's birthday. We're going to sing happy birthday to her before we leave this place. I want to remind you of this one simple, precious truth that I hope some of that mindless rambling helped the Holy Spirit did something with it in you followers of Jesus those who are having their minds renewed we are the ones who peer through the fog of seeming chance and coincidence to see the sovereign hand of God at work in the world let's sing happy birthday to Pat before we close out our service today. Okay. Listen, this isn't a happy birthday when you say happy birthday to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? You <laughs> mean? Come on. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance to you and fill you with peace. Amen. Amen.